today I have the honor of finishing up the series we've been working on. Uh, so if you remember, Simeon started with love, then Nate did connect. And last week, Simeon did serve. So does anyone know which one that was me? Uh, yeah, reach. I'm doing reach. So, the passage I'm going to be reading from today is one we should all be pretty familiar with. And we read it together all the time as a group. Uh, that is the Great Commission. So if we go to Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Okay, okay. So, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, and it says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, the end of the page. All right, so there's a lot in these three verses. They're just, I, I really like them. Uh, so that's why I was glad I got to teach on reach. So let's break them down a little bit. We'll start with verse 18. So when Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth will be given to me. It's pretty much what Jesus is saying here is all the power of the universe, you know, all the power on heaven and on earth has been given to me. So we should probably be paying attention to what he's about to say. That's a pretty big opening. So, what does he have to say? Verse 19. It says, Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the part that always stuck out to me in this verse was go. He says, go and make disciples. Right? He doesn't say, wait for the right moment, and then when someone gives the opportunity, you can kind of point towards me and hope it works out. No, he's saying, go and make disciples. It says, make disciples of all nations. So, like, we're all in the image of God. Right? So we all deserve to hear. It's also saying all the nations, right? Not just, like, make disciples in America. We have an entire world full of people yeah. that we can be reaching to. Um, our churches used to have these big flags grouping around of all the missions we were supporting. Uh, we go every month. We do a new one in the Sunday service. So it's really... I mean, I'm not really telling you to go fly to China and start preaching on the streets, but go and make disciples. Um, and then he also says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, so not only is baptism an outward profession of your faith, it's also you're an old creation, and you go in the water, and you come up your new creation. It's the same way as before Christ, and then you you have Christ in your heart and the Holy Spirit and your new creation. So, he's telling us to go make disciples. So what do we do after we make the disciples? Well, he tells us right in verse 20, he says, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So he's basically saying, make a disciple, and then once you make the disciple, teach them. You know, keep nurturing them, keep building their faith. Uh, my buddy Abner right there, uh, we were in a Bible study, and he gave a great analogy. He was talking about how there's a farmer, and he plants the seed, but then he has to put in the work to reap the reward. Right? So in this case, the reward would be a believer, right? another brother or sister in the kingdom of God. Um, so what's that work part? Um, well, let's get into that. So how can I make disciples? <laughs> how do I make disciples? Woo! <laughs> So this is putting in the work to reap the reward. Well, in order to make a disciple, first thing you have to do is be a disciple. Right, so what is a disciple? We'll start with that. Um, a disciple is simply a student learning from a teacher. So in our case, Jesus would be a teacher, and we are his disciples. We're the students that are learning from Jesus the teacher. In this case right now, you guys are the students learning from me, the teacher, hopefully. Um, wow, I thought I was going to get lost in that. Um, oh well. So, student learning from teacher. Right. So now that you're a disciple, the next thing is to reach out to God. So before you start trying to, like, to make disciples from other people, you want to make sure you have the right heart, the right mind, you're doing it for the right reasons. So reach out to God. Uh, the easiest way to do this is in prayer. Uh, we have a direct line with God. 
no matter what we're doing, what we're going through, no matter what time of the day, you can talk and God will hear you. He'll listen. So reach up to him. Ask him, you know, change my heart. Uh, give me some wisdom. Is there anything to make sure you're doing it for the right reasons? I don't want you to go out after this meeting and make disciples because Mitchell told you to. That's not going to make good fruit. Uh, I want to see some great fruit in this world uh, coming from you guys. So that comes in the reaching in response. But you have to know what the response is. So we also talk about in prayer to start with perspective shift. This is another time you can go for that perspective shift. Right? Um, so just pray, ask for perspective shift. If you don't want to be doing this out of pride, make sure you know, I'm doing this in response to the gospel. We need that to a little bit. Um, so the next thing is go. You know, so like he said in verse 19, go and make disciples. Um, like I said, I'm not telling you to go to China, but you know, maybe you have a family member that's at home. Go home. You know, maybe talk to them. Uh, go to school. Most of you go to school. Um, go to work. Uh, in this world, we're usually surrounded by non-believers. Um, but go out. Don't wait for the right moment. Um, so that all sounds like fine and dandy. But, and I've heard it like a million times. But why don't you do it? So the next thing we're talking about is what's holding me back. First thing is it's different for everyone. We all have the same general roots. So the general root here, I think, is what's holding us back is fear. Right? So I say that it's going to look different for each of us. Um, so you might be worried, oh, what if I go to try to talk to this person and they don't like me because I'm a Christian? Or what if this group is going to look at me differently because I'm a Christian? Or what if I'm friends with this person and they show interest, but I'm scared that if I talk to them about it, they're not going to want to be my friend. For me personally, it was always, I'm scared that I'm not good enough. That I don't, don't want to, if this is the most important conversation this person will have in their life, is it really going to come from me? Uh, I don't know about that. Um, but there's really nothing to do. Uh, another thing that holds us back is not having motivation. Some days I'll wake up, get in the Word, listen to worship music, I'm going off. Other days I'll wake up and I'm like, let me hit snooze a few times, and we'll struggle through the day. <laughs> um, this is also another great time for prayer. Um, as for that perspective shift, there's lots to be grateful for. I uh, was talking about that. Just write down a list or something. Um, so let's, let's put, go into a scenario here. Let's say you're at school. Uh, you're at work, and there's a kid sitting by himself. Right? Um, but you don't really feel like talking to them. That's a lot of work. Just talking to people normally, and then you got to add talking about Christ on top. That's a lot of work. Um, pray for that perspective shift. Go talk to the student. Go sit next to him. Even if it's really awkward, because I can always guarantee it will be at first. Uh, but keep keep going after him. Uh, go after him. Um, Next thing I want to talk about is the war uh, that's going on. I like we keep talking about this. It always gets me fired up. It's like the war. Whoa. So we've got good versus evil, you know, light versus dark, um, God versus Satan. Wow, all this crazy stuff going on, like the spiritual realm. Sounds so cool. Um, so what's really going on here? Like when I was talking about baptism earlier, and it's like your old creation, the new creation. And now you have. Before, and you have your flesh, and now you have the Holy Spirit in you when you believe. So they're always battling at each other. It's always going on. Luckily, we got some good news for you guys. Uh, we're not going to lose this war. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but the, the leader on our side, he created everything. Like, he's not going to lose. Um, we're on the right team. So you really shouldn't have no fear. Right? Uh, God is God. He's, if you truly believe what He says He is, and nothing is impossible with God, that should put something in you. You're not going to want to keep that to yourself. You're not going to be like, oh, I have this great, amazing gift. I'm not going to show them. It doesn't usually work like that. Um, 
So that's another thing is you have to realize the gospel. This is where the reason of response comes from, the response part. What are we responding to? The gospel. Right? So Jesus came and he was perfect. Let's go back even further. Adam and Eve were created and it was perfect. And then you know they ate the fruit, sin into the world, and now we're all wicked. And that brings death. And now we have Jesus who lives a perfect life without sin. He doesn't think a bad thought. He doesn't do a bad action. He is perfect. So, his punishment shouldn't exist, right? He shouldn't die. But then, he looks at us and he says, I love each and every one of you so much that I'm going to sacrifice myself so that you can have my perfect righteousness. So, that's just amazing, right? I was, we always talk about one thing, like he's walking with a cross on his back and people are spitting on him. That is so fat. Right? And then every time we sin, we're pretty much spitting on him. So there's this perfect being who decides to sacrifice his life for us and our response is to spit on him. I don't know how he loves us, but that's why it's good news. He has so much mercy, just like you guys don't have to drink that disgusting blended thing. <laughs> God's <laughs> mercy. All I gotta say. So that should also bring out a response. I really want you guys to embrace grace. Right? Look at what Christ has done for you, and you should want to reflect that to other people. Right? You guys can do anything. God has no limits. And if God is in you, if you have the Holy Spirit, that means you have no limits. You can do anything. So start small. Talk to that kid that's sitting by himself. But why stop there? He says go to the nations. Well, shoot. Let's start with the schools. Right? Let's go to the schools. You guys go to school every day. You're surrounded by non-believers. There is nothing stopping you from taking over the school. We could fill this building with new believers. That would be sick. You know, you could have all these people here. And we're all just believing. It's beyond me. So, what can I do? Um, so we're talking about what's holding me back. There's the fear, the no motivation, and the war. So what can I do when I'm scared, when I'm not feeling motivated, and when I feel like I'm losing this war? Well, this is, again, it's kind of all got the same roots, but it's different for each of us. So you can pray. Uh, if you're scared or not motivated, pray. If you feel like you're losing, you're like, hey, God, what's going on? Uh, read the Word. Uh, so the next one is daily devotions. Uh, this could be as little as reading one verse when you wake up or one verse when you go to sleep. But just be in His Word daily. I, got, I want you guys to be consistent and persistent in the Word. You know, read it as much as you can, as often as you can, because it's good for you. So I'm about good fruit. If you want a way to produce good fruit, read this word. And then worship and serve kind of go together for me. Um, the singer was talking last week how when you're serving, you're in God's presence. Right? So if you're feeling scared or unmotivated or like you're losing the war, um, I'm sure all you need is a little bit of God's presence and you're going to have a change of heart. Um, so pray for that. Um, so that's what I wanted you guys to really think about was what is it for you? Right? What gets you into God's presence? Uh, Simeon was talking about that a lot last last week. So we weren't here out of church. Oh, I think it was beautiful. Um, so yeah. Um, and then tonight we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, instead of going into these big groups. Um, what I want you guys to do is get into small groups or big groups. Just more than two people that you're really close with. And I want you guys to talk. Uh, talk about what I was talking about. You know, it could be something that's like, what has Jesus done for you recently? Um, where, where can you see yourself making disciples? Or, like, what is it that you can do personally? So I came up with like four, and I was like, well, that's like all I do. Um, so talk about that stuff. Uh, and I really want you guys to pray. Pray a 
about me and you. Pray for each other. Pray for the schools. Pray for the world. Just any way that you can think where you're reaching or in responding, I want you guys to share. So before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us real quick. So dear Lord, uh, I thank you for the time you've given us tonight. Uh, I pray that anything you're laying on these students' heart will be able to be said uh, in these smaller groups. I pray that they would be fruitful, they would be filled with good conversation. Uh, I pray that they would stay focused on you, Lord, because uh, that's how we truly should be all the time. Uh, so these things I pray in your name. Amen. Amen.